All right, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at how we can create uh, a fabric weave animation. Now, uh, I'm basing this off a tutorial I saw online that was originally done in X Particles. And while X Particles is great, um, as I was watching and I thought, you know, there's really no reason we need a plugin for this. And while there are times we need plugins for like smoke and fire and, and liquids, um, this is not the case. So I thought it would be fun to do a video to see how we could end up with a similar result um, without using X particles. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the video. Um, I saw it is a bit old, five years. Um, great tutorial, by the way. Definitely recommend watching it if you do have X particles and want to see how to do this in there. But with this, I was looking at this and, you know, it's it's really basic. The There's no reason we need X particles to create this look. So that's what we're going to be doing today. And also, this will be relatively procedural. Um, so I'm going to start by going into a side view and coming into my um, spline pen. I do want to make sure snap is turned on uh, and that in my snap settings here, grid and work plane are turned on. So that will allow me to create um, my pen tool shape and just kind of make this as even as possible as quickly as possible. And you can make this as shorter or as long as you would like. It's also possible to kind of duplicate it out and connect them. Um, I'll do this a little bit longer before maybe going through and connecting these just so we can see that process. Um, maybe just a few more as well. All right, so that is looking good. Hit escape to finish it, back to my um, right view. And what I can do is snap my axis to something like right there, and then duplicate this. Okay, actually make sure I turn axis modification off before duplicating it. And this is a bit strange where it won't snap at this point. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but I know that my grid spacings are every 50, so I can just kind of use my transform there to type that in. And so what I'll do is actually delete this previous point. Okay, so that way when I connect and delete these, I can join these together without having that extra point in there. So I'll do join, joins up perfectly. And maybe we'll do that one more uh, time. So I'll duplicate this, take my axis modification, oops, turn it on, and snap it, move this. Like I said, it's going to be in increments of 50, so we can use that to our advantage. Delete that one extra point, turn off my snap, connect and delete, and come through, join segments one more time. At this point, I can also select all my points by hitting Control or Command A, and then right clicking and choosing Soft Interpolation. So a little bit faster than trying to create all those manually, create them evenly, and there we go. You could also scale this up or down if you want those a little bit higher or lower. So maybe we do want just a bit lower. From here, what I'm going to do is put this in a cloner. And this is going to be kind of the spacing of the different um, uh, strings, fabric, whatever you want to call it. So once I have that spline in a cloner, I'll switch this to linear. I don't want it to move up on the Y axis. So instead, I'll do the X. And I'll start by just doing one centimeter. And I'm gonna get a bit crazy here, typing in a thousand. And I probably want these a little bit closer together, but like I said, this is gonna be you know, adjustable or procedural throughout this entire um, process, so I can always come back to this. And you know, depending on your system, you may wanna do a, few, a bit fewer than a thousand, and you can just increase the spacing to get something um, similar. Looks like I made this a bit too long, but once again, we can always um, fix that. Now, this next part is going to require us to put the cloner into a connect object. And this is just so um, what we do next sees this as a single spline and not a bunch of cloned splines, right? So this is all of our pieces of fabric and how close they are together. So we could call this like fabric base. And then what I'm going to do is create a cube. 
scale it down really small, right? Something like that, and put it in a cloner. And we're going to clone onto object and drag in our connect. And what this will do is create clones, okay, um, at different points along our object here. Now, I don't want 10, I just want one. Okay, so we get one row of clones at the very beginning of our spline. And what we can do is then use the rate here to get some movement. So if I set this to 10 and hit play, we're gonna see this move. That's maybe a bit too fast. So I can turn that down to say one. If I wanna make this a little bit longer, I can. There we go. And we can also add just a little bit of variation here. And you'll see as I turn up the variation, these kind of spread out a little bit. And I'll, I will also mention they get more spread out as time goes by. So um, just keep that in mind. But for our purposes, that should work well, okay? And we'll call this um, cubes for tracer. Because what we're gonna do next is hide both of these things. because We don't want them visible because they're not really going to be a uh, part of the end result. What we want to do now is create a tracer and place our cubes for tracer cloner inside of it. And we also want to uncheck trace vertices. So it just traces the axis. Or, and so now what we're going to do is get these splines being drawn out. Okay. Um, because the tracer is tracing out a spline from the middle of each cloned cube. So that's going to be our kind of base animation here. The one thing I want to check on is how smooth these are. And they look pretty good. If you did want to smooth these out a bit more, uh, do so at your own risk. But uh, switching the type here from linear uh, to Bezier and then using an intermediate point type could definitely help. But that looks pretty good for our purposes here. Um, the one thing I might have forget forgot to have turned on in our cubes here uh, is smooth rotation. That will hopefully give these a little bit smoother movement because you can see how it's kind of fast. It isn't even. There's definitely ways we could um, you know, even that out a bit, but I, I don't mind it for right now. Right. Okay, so we have our, our tracer. Now the problem is we need to create some geometry because if we just render this right now, okay, and I'm gonna switch to Redshift for this. If we just render this, we're not gonna see anything because, okay, our tracer is not creating geometry. We see our, our cubes here. We actually don't want those to render. I can start, stop my IPR. Set both of those thread. So the way we can get this to render, um, and you can do this in other renderers as well. Octane would be very similar. Um, even Cinema 4D, I think you could do it using um, the hair tag is what you could add in order to get this to work. Because that's um, grass, hair, something like that. It's been a while since I've used it. But for our purposes, I'm going to use the redshift object tag. And because this is a tracer, because this is a, a spline, we now have this curve section in the redshift object tag. So um, what I can do uh, first, what I should have done first is actually create a dome light and I'll just find an HDRI from um, from our asset browser here. Okay, just grab that, drag it in here. Perfect. Uh, but the real magic happens in the Redshift object tag where in the curve section, I wanna switch this from disabled to cylinders. You could also do hair strands, okay? But even just doing cylinders is gonna create geometry uh, at render time. 
So I can start this, wait for everything to update. And there we go, we have some geometry. Now this um, graph here will allow us to kind of change the scale at the very end or really the beginning. So what I can do is drag this down a little bit to make this part a little smaller. And we should see that. And I could also maybe even do it a bit more so. Uh, and then I can adjust the handle here to you know, only get it more towards the end. So great. That's looking okay, but it still looks really perfect, like too perfect. So what I'm gonna do is select the cubes for tracer, though you could also do it on the cloner inside the fabric base here as well. Um, is add a random effector to it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is add a random effector to it. Okay, it's not gonna look like anything happens till we, we rewind this, but now if I hit play, things are gonna be crazy. So you can you know make this as crazy or as controlled as you would like. Um, I'm gonna come in here and set this to like one centimeter for each. And that's just gonna give us a little bit of imperfection here. Okay, so you can see how things are just little imperfect. You know, the spacing isn't perfectly even, the height is not gonna be perfectly even, um, and you could, you know, adjust these however you see fit. So I can take this, let it kind of go a bit, and now when I render, you know, we're gonna get something that is just a little bit more organic and natural looking. Now you can notice we can see through these a little bit more than we could before. So um, we would want to maybe figure out which axis that is. And while I would think it would be the X, there's no guarantees. So I can lower that one, okay, and see what we get. I'm not sure that works. So I can set this to zero. Rewind, see what we get. You can see that they're not, really a top view would be better for this. Okay, still has some irregularity in the spacing. Okay, so it turns out it's Y. So maybe with Y, I just do like a 0.1. Uh, another thing I could do to help with that would be to make the spacing even less between these. Right, and that's where it can help to come in here and say, oh, okay, instead of one centimeter, I want 0.5, um, and then maybe increase the count to like 1300. Uh, still should work pretty quickly, okay, just because uh, of, you know, we're not actually creating any geometry at this point, it's just the tracer. Um, the geometry is not created till render time using the Redshift object tag. So this should look maybe a little bit closer together. All right, awesome, I'm liking, I'm liking that. And I like how, you know, everything is not perfectly even here. Now, let's create some basic materials for this just to help differentiate things here. So I'll create one material, and with this one, I'll just choose a color, maybe go with like a blue, and increase the roughness. I'm um, not gonna get too much into the material here. Uh, you can always, you know, mess around with this to get something more cloth-like but this will be applied to our tracer. Okay, and in fact, what I could do is group all of this together. And call this one, and put the material on that. Duplicate this, call this two. Okay, and I'm gonna wanna offset this about 50 centimeters, so Coordinates should just be Z. Yep. So whatever this is, I can just add 50 by typing in plus 50. And what that should do is give us this kind of overlapping animation, but you can see they don't quite line up anymore. So if that's okay with you, great. If you wanted to make it overlap, that's very easy to do. 
Okay, you can see how this one's much further ahead. Um, we can go in here, select our cubes for tracer, and this is gonna be a good time to actually turn those back on to help visualize this. So I'll turn off the tracers, cubes back on. You can see how these are off. And so I can select either one of these really, and then adjust the offset. And you can see how that's gonna make it go um, you know, further down or back. Now, since it's at the beginning, um, it's not gonna do a whole lot. So it's actually this one that I'm probably better off just doing maybe like a 0.5. So perfect, they're about even. So should be good with that. Um, tracer is back on, hide my cubes for tracer. I'm gonna want to create one more material, change the color and just do like a green, maybe a bit paler than I wanted. That'll work. Apply that to second one. And now when we render, look at what we have. Okay, our two kind of fabrics weaving together. Okay, now, you know, how large or small you wanna make these cylinders is entirely up to you. You know, you can see this holds up pretty well and I have enough to, you know, really kind of uh, stay pretty zoomed out here, all things considered. And then, you know, let this grow, which we're actually better off doing um, here and then hitting render, maybe something like this. And yeah, you can see we have, you know, we can kind of fill our whole screen with this, this really nice weaving animation. So this was one approach we could do with this. The other would be if we rotated one of these 90 degrees. This may screw up the tracer, but in a perfect world, I'm able to kind of use this to help set it up. And things are slowing down a little bit, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, everything looks pretty good. So maybe I just kind of eyeball this. So that looks pretty good. And we'll let this go a little bit longer. Except I reached the end of my frame range here, so. I'll keep an eye on that this time. So, all right, that looks pretty good. Let's see what we got. All right, awesome, not too bad. Now we could definitely mix things up a little bit with our random effectors. Um, I would definitely want to vary the um, seeds in them to make these just a little bit random though. You really can't you know, tell all that much that uh, they're not. And what I would do to finish this off Right, maybe let it go a little bit further. Perfect. I find a nice view of this. Maybe something like this. Is add some depth of field. And that can help pull this all together here. Um, actually, yeah, we'll just do it with this particular view, although I think the other one um, ultimately looked a bit better. Um, create a standard Redshift camera, look through it. I'll go into the Redshift camera tag, turn on override and enabled. Uh, for my bokeh, it's gonna take the settings from the camera, which means I can now use my focus distance to click where I want in focus, and then come back in here to the physical section and adjust my f-stop to give me some depth of field. And if that F1 is not low enough, I can definitely add more manually by just going even lower with that. So something like this, I think actually looks pretty cool. It looks, you know, pretty interesting. And just for fun, let's add a little bit more to our random here. Okay, we'll have to redraw everything. So I'm gonna stop my IPR.
And this technique could be applied to all sorts of other kind of weaves as well. You could have them actually kind of weave a little bit better. You know, this is just kind of rotating them. So it's really a cheat. But um, if you wanted a more accurate kind of weaved pattern, you know, we could absolutely do that as well using this technique. You just want to spend more time making sure the splines kind of work together um, in this kind of, um, you know, I don't know, 90 degree uh, pattern. But that will do it for this video. Uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to see um, and take care.